next week will be 21 and 22. There's 28 chapters of Acts. Pretty sure. 26 or 28. So we're almost done with Acts. 28. And then, um, yes, after Acts, we're going straight into the lips. Right? You want to go first? I right, come on. Yeah. Uh, I picked up this verse when I did the final verse. It says, God brought the first miracles by the hand of the hand of It's excellently really. In this chapter, you can clearly see the magnitude of what it is for God to work miracles for someone who truly has belief and trust in the God of the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine how someone's faith took a tremendous increase when they were healed by just touching the hand of children? So not only was this by what Paul believed, but by what they believed. This goes back to what Jesus had spake, spoken in Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. It says, Again, I say to you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, that they shall ask and shall be done for the name of my Father. Come on, bro. Right. If you think about it, if you think about Jesus' ministry, 90% of the time, he would say, your faith has healed you. Or your because of your faith, I'm gonna because of your faith, I'm gonna but there are several instances where he didn't care about their faith. For real. Yeah. Look into it. It was all about him. So if you think about like with Paul, God it says, This is my version right here, in, uh, NLT. Some of you guys probably have this version. God gave Paul the power to perform unusual miracles. So God's bestowing his gift on him. And we're going to get into some of this where, you know, when Paul goes to somewhere where now his faith is so strong that God's given him this gift, and when he runs into people that also have that same type of faith, they get gifts. Boom. <coughs> miracles. And that can happen today. Now. Now. Faith brings miracles. It does. You want to go? Yeah, all right. I'm ready. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, go. Uh, I'm going to talk about <laughs> Acts 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them overpowered them and rebelled against them, so that they fled out of that house and became a This became known both to all Jews and Greeks, dwelling in the pieces, and the spirit fell on their walls, and the name of Jesus was great in time. In these scriptures, pardon me if I didn't write it away from the way it In these scriptures, it shows how crucial it is and necessary a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You can't rely just on being hearers of the truth without practicing. Being as well with this Holy Spirit is the only thing that truly protects our faith. Knowing who we are, praying to you, his characteristics are like no other. We must be firm believers with our own own own. Come on, bro. Like it says, this is crazy, bro. I love the Holy Spirit. It's because yesterday, we were, I was watching, um, so History Channel has this TV show called um, True Monsters. And on that TV show, they were going over exorcisms. And how the Catholic Church has more people trained as exorcists now than ever in history, right? And Rachel's like, well, she's asking questions about, like, well, what are you going to do to be trained this, that, and other? I'm like, the Catholic Church has their own little setup, but it's verses like this where it says, a group of Jews were traveling from town to town casting out demons. And they were good. They were successful except for a certain, a certain few places, right? And I wrote this down whenever you were, you were actually reading that. Demons recognize authority. He said, I know Jesus. I know Paul. I know what he said. Uh, yeah, he said, but who the heck are you? Because you didn't speak with authority. You were coming and you half-heartedly believe that it's possible. It all boils down to your belief system. What you think is truth and real. Like literally what you truly believe can manifest in this world. It boils down to that. And I wrote down, because you said, we can't just hear the word. Uh, in James chapter 1, I think it's somewhere around verse 20 or 22, he says, don't just listen and don't just read it, but do it. Be doers, right? And when you start walking that out, God starts giving you gifts, 
3 Corinthians, bro. Superpowers. You guys hear me talk about that all the time? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why? Wrong <laughs> time. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's gonna it's gonna happen to me too. You know what I mean? He's gonna give it to me for like thirty seconds. I'm gonna be like, yes, no. <laughs> Break it back. <laughs> That's just my luck. <coughs> Who else wants to do nineteen? Out. Come on. On verse 6, and when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Mine's really questions more than anything. Oh. Paul laid his hands on them and prayed through the Holy Ghost and power of tongues and prophecy came upon them. There were twelve of them specifically. <coughs> who were, what was it about these twelve men? Just there were, Why was it? About twelve men just as there were twelve disciples, what was it about these men that they were going to do that the Holy Spirit gave them these gifts so swiftly? What was it because that they were doing the work like they were Jews? I mean like that, I don't does it I'm, say I'm, they were Jews? Let's see. Hold on, let me you'll have to give me three seconds. Actually thirty three seconds. Let me read this again. Um all, my version says just believers. It doesn't say Jews. I think, yeah, I don't think they were Jews. Uh, that's why I was confused. I was thinking that they were, but that's why so, I said who were these? Who were these men? I didn't. It, it, all, all my version says is they were a, a group of believers, and it is. And there's no coincidences with God. There's twelve of them. Okay, twelve super important, obviously. You know, and Paul says, he says, I, I'm glad you believe, but have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit? And they say, what's the Holy Spirit? Right? What the heck's the Holy Spirit? You know what I mean? And it's not about, it's not about Paul's faith so much as it is their eagerness to learn more. Does that make sense? So they were at a position and a mindset and a heart set where they believed so wholeheartedly that when they heard Paul speaking about the Holy Spirit, they knew it to be truth and they wanted to know more about it and they were completely open to it. So when he laid his hands on them, they received the Holy Spirit because of their faith. It just it seems like that's constant throughout here other than I think it was Simon previously that he wanted to purchase the Holy Ghost. Right, he's trying to buy it, and he couldn't buy it, right? right? Like, it seems like it's so much easier for them to have to give to the Holy Spirit for it to come upon them so suddenly and be able to use it. And I, I, I just, well, when you, if and when, if you haven't already been overcome by the Holy Spirit, not everybody prophesies, <coughs> but dude, it's... Those it's the like most them. amazing thing you'll ever experience in your life. And when it happened to me, I just so happened to still be locked up. And I like rolled out of my rack crying and laughing at the side. I mean, it, I was hysterical. Hysterical. I wasn't prophesying or anything like that, but it was like, oh, I can't explain it, man. I can't explain it. It was overwhelming, dude. It didn't just go away. It was like the whole day. I mean, like, it was crazy, you know? And. Any time that it, every individual's different, you know what I mean. And any time that happens, I'm telling you something's going to manifest. When you're overcome by the Holy Spirit, something is going to manifest. You're going to operate in a gift right in, whatever it is. And I'll, I brought my folder. I'll I'll bring them in here and read to you guys all the manifestations how the Holy Spirit manifests itself through speaking <coughs> tongues, crying, fire, weeping, laughing, traveling outside of your body. I'm trying to remember them all. There's like ten of them different ways the Holy Spirit will come upon you, right? And that just so happened that they were ready for it, and you can only give what you got. And Paul had it, right? For real. You can't, you can't give somebody something that ain't yours. Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit. He's like, come on, let me heal you, right? What, what's the word for it for the traveling out of the What's the word for it? Yeah, no, it's called, yeah, transfer, astrophysics. 
traveling outside your body on the paper because in the Bible and I got the Bible verses that back him up um, astral projection is one term for it um, whoopsies Astral projection seems to be the the number one um, term for traveling outside your body. Uh, astral projection, astral traveling. Um, That's the gear spirit, though, right? That, the gear spirit traveling, right? Uh, that that is there's there's only one spirit inside of you. Know. You know what I'm saying? And that is when you connect with it, and it just so happens that that's how it manifests itself with you. Um, Extended Hand Ministries, the Mother Church of True Purpose, and the, the guys from Alabama, I believe they've come up here. Maybe some of you guys were still here when they came here before. Yeah, they come here. Uh, Pastor Charles here. has experienced it um, and, and will tell you about it. It's kind of crazy at first, you know what I mean? But it's biblical. It's biblical. The Holy Spirit, you cannot put limitations on God or the Holy Spirit. Period. When you start doing that, oh man, that ain't possible. You're smoked. You're smoked. I'm just here to When you like, because it freaked us all out. When you were still here, when they took us to that ordination, what did yeah. it? And Cosby, not you, James. Remember, uh, we got the bus stuck. Clay had his car. You went with us. We got the daggum van, the the ministry van. I don't know if it's still out there. Big, huge Dodge ministry van. We got it stuck on the ground, and all 20 of us had to get out and push it uh -huh. to get it unstuck in Cosby. They came and it freaked us all out, bro. Me, Justin, Kevin, all of us was like, we're in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> like, these guys are crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? But over time, we learned that these things were truths. What they were speaking were truths. We just never heard them before. And we was like, you're insane. But they weren't. They were speaking of the Holy Spirit, things that we weren't experienced enough to know about. We just hadn't come across them. You know what I mean? It's just like we had a guy in here six or seven months ago named Eric big big guy and he was like he said something 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 about demons being sent somewhere permanently and at that time I Chip had just started asking me to teach I hadn't been doing it very long I had never heard of the abyss I was like I don't think demons are until Jesus comes back I said I don't think demons can go somewhere and permanently stay there I think they can always attack us and, and try to entice us you know I was wrong Completely wrong. I wish he hadn't left the program so I could come back and, and apologize to him. There's a thing called the abyss. It's in Revelation. And if you, if Jesus cast you out, that's why all them demons said, send us into the pigs. In the Bible, they said, send us into the pigs. Because <laughs> if he sent them into the abyss, they can't come back and entice them. They're stuck there. That, that's when he cast him out of the guy that was After, attacking there was him a with the graveyard. 7,000 of them. So, yeah. I mean, there's things that, and it still happens. There's things that you're like, there's no way. And then six months down the road, You've heard it so many times now, and the Holy Spirit and God's revealing it to you as a truth. You're like, oh man, it is real. So don't ever put God or the Holy Spirit in a box. Ever. You know what I'm saying? But, Alex, I don't know if I answered your question good, good or at all. Those guys, at that point in their walk, were ready to receive the Holy Spirit. They were ready. Right? And it does, like, why do you think even today people will tell you to surround yourself with spiritual mentors? Like Pastor Steve, Pastor Tom, Chip and Russell, you know, you, and you can't, you can't rely on humans because of that fact. You can't limit yourself to just one, right? Like they're they're more experienced, they're more mature, they've seen more. Pastor Steve, bro, you don't crash an airplane in the jungle in 1970 and 40 years later come out like he's been through some stuff. You know what I mean? Dude knows what he's talking about. Right? And spiritually, he knows what he's talking about. Surround yourself with guys like that. Because when you're like, when you're like, man, why, why is it that? Why is it them and not me? If that, I don't know by the writing of your notes if that's kind of how you feel. Like, why them and not them? Why them and not them? God, like, God's picky sometimes. 
That's a real thing. God, God ain't gonna. God won't give you the same thing He gave me. He won't give you the same thing He gave him. He won't. You know, like maybe you're not ready for it. Maybe your heart ain't in the right place. You know. What do you think the reason is though, why you don't see it today? It Most says of greater things you should, you should be able things to do. like that are happening right now. They're happening right now. But over and over. What it is? No, here in America, everywhere. They're happening, bro. There's demons being cast out. There's people being healed in America. Right now. Probably right down the road. Be honest with you. Most of us are too blind to see it for what it is, even as believers. Even as believers in Christ, when you see something, you, you write it off as something else. I'm just saying. You write it off as something else. Read the book, Jet Ride to Hell. Dude was in prison in Missouri for 19 and a half years. I've talked about this before. Healing people. Touching them and healing them. And there was like three cases where they tried to sue him because they had a lawsuit against the prison for getting hurt. And he healed them. And they wasn't hurt no more. So there goes their money. They was mad about it. It's a real thing. Backed up by hundreds of witnesses. How many people was on the compound? Talking about dude is so mad that they're trying to sue him because they had a lawsuit and now they lost their lawsuit because they're healed. They ain't hurt them. It's happening right here in this country. But it takes faith. It takes willingness and eagerness and rep. You have to be you have to be true in here. You have to really be true in here. Because I told Pastor Jeremy, I was like, man, because I don't dream much, you know what I'm saying? I had a dream right up here. I don't know if I've ever told you this. I had a dream that I healed Kevin. Where Kevin's had them five back surgeries and stuff. We went and worked out and he was hurt. I had a dream I healed him. And Pastor Jeremy's like, that's evangelism. That's the, you know, you're working in the uh, spirit of evangelism. And that's a gift. Da, 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 and you just got to work your way towards it. And I'm nowhere close to it. I, you know, like, honestly, I don't, I don't truly believe I can do it yet. I say, yeah. Because I think at some point God's going to open something up in my brain and go, but if they're not seeing it or witnessing it, you don't believe it. Number one. Number one, either you don't believe it or you're looking in the wrong places for it. Because it takes pure faith. Pure faith to operate in some of these gifts. To operate in healing, to operate in like uh, does it was it Mike, was you in here when Johnny B. Good was in here? I remember him. And he had on YouTube a video of them casting this demon out of him. It didn't work, number one. You know what I mean? Even if it was real, I'm not saying it was over a phone. They was casting, and it's on YouTube, you can look it up. They casting this demon out of him on a video visit on YouTube. And like, you, the Bible tells us not to judge the heart, right? We can judge each other's actions and try to correct each other as believers, but we can't judge your heart. I can't say, well, I know for a fact you don't believe in your heart. I can't say that. We're not, we're not supposed to say that because I don't know your heart. Only God does. But when you see him, he's coming back to rehab. A year and a half later, he's back in rehab talking about, man, watch my video. Man, watch my video. Man, watch my video. All he cared about was watching his video. Fame. Fame and fortune. Man, I'm a, I'm a YouTube. Watch my video. Dude, you're like, if I've met anybody that's a YouTube star, it's you, and I've heard you talk about it three times. That's it. <laughs> And twice because you wanted to pay one of your bills. <laughs> He's like, man, I need to pay a bill. <laughs> that, you don't care about the pain. He did. It's all about the intensity of your heart. It truly is, man. This whole thing, everything, what you feel about Jesus, what you feel about God, what you feel about the Holy Spirit, and what, it's, what the Holy Spirit's capable of doing inside of you, it all boils down to what you truly believe in your heart. Period. You can talk a demon out of the person yes. and it still not go away. Yes. It will right then because I've done it. What's the Bible say? The Bible says he'll go get seven more and seven come back. Ten. And he comes back to a holy sweat house, right? That's what I the Bible says, right? One time. You can. I know. In the name of Jesus, you can cast out demons. I know. I That's know. what I was telling Rachel. I was like, they train guys to do that. But if you truly believe in God, and you, you believe can. his word, if God you can do that. Heart, Exorcism. Um, a right. A right. Verses yeah. out of a human. I read two verses that woman. Ooh. She shut her mouth, grabbed the purse, and walked off. That's crazy, ain't it? Yeah. And it, the Bible literally says, "Be on the lookout. Beware. 
because you just cleaned the house. You just swept the floors, wiped the windows, the windows. The demons are coming back. They're coming back to a clean house. It I'm says that a lot. It's real. It's real. It is, man. It's crazy. It's crazy, but it's true. The Holy Spirit's tough, bro. There's. I don't know the Bible all that well, but I know it's about this. God's in my heart. Yes. And I can go it's to about the Bible this. and scare a demon off. I know that. Knowledge and wisdom are two different things. When you're walking it out, there's power. There's power. When I was younger, my dad when they witness that, they're skeptics. And almost instantly you're skeptic. Unless your faith is firm and steadfast in your heart. Almost instantly they're like, oh, she did be quiet. You know, anybody can do that. Right? What's Jesus say? He says, is it easier for me to forgive you of your sins or is it easier for me to actually heal you and let you walk? It's way easier for you to say, I forgive you of your sins because how do you know if that's really true or not? He says, well, let me show you who I am. Get up and walk. Still skeptics. Right? You gotta believe it, man. You gotta believe it. It's real. Like, I can't tell you, I can't tell you enough that it's real. Like, oh. It's the most important question you'll ever answer. Who is Jesus Christ? Our relationship with God is based on the Lord. What you believe. What you believe. Hebrews 11.2. 11, 11, it starts in 11.1. Yeah. Faith is the substance of things hoped for not seen, right? Right? Of, of things not seen. <coughs> when you get a phone call? <laughs> uh, I record videos. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Come on, dude. Uh, I did 11-12. Uh, well, I don't know how you look at Paul. Yeah. Uh, God did extraordinary miracles through Paul, uh, even though that um, people who have the same Jesus and his apron, their apron, they get the flesh scan or take the sick and uh, they, they were healed and cured and he was very blessed them. That's what I mean. It's real, dude. Like, this came from the church in Alabama, Pastor Charles of Extended Hand Ministries. They anointed that. Like, the reason why. Me and Chip decided to hang it right here, literally, just so you guys can touch it. For real. That's no joke. I, I, I kid you not. I said, you have to hang that in the comments so they can touch it. I did like the first three days I was here. Like, yeah, and I thought, like, whoever was here when we first hung it, I, I used sports as an analogy. And I said, y'all ever seen them in the uh, hit the thing? Yeah. All the teams or whatever, all the players on the team go through and hit the same thing, touch the same thing, touch the same thing. Real, real thing. It's a real thing. Dude, they prayed over that for weeks, weeks, anointed it and everything. Yeah. You can't put it no longer. Yes. That's a terror right there, bro. We might be scared. That's awesome. We got He's all I got to see his face. You got to see it. Dang it. <laughs> I never really, I forgot, I, I put a, uh, I got an anointed rack from my pastor, and I put it in my wallet. And I didn't even, I forgot it was in there. But I was, well, I knew I put it in there, you know, but I forgot after a while ago. And I had to put it in, like, three brothers. Well, you know what I mean? I was if like, the, pay bills and then run out, and then, but like, you know, later, you know what I mean? If like, the anointing is done in faith, true faith, then it's permanent. It's a permanent anointing on that, on that object. Read the, uh, read the Old Testament. All the stuff inside the temple sacred, inside the tabernacle, sacred. All of it. Wooden spoons, altars, rocks. I don't care what was in there. The oil, the lampstand, 
the posts, everything. It was safe. It was anointed for use by God and the priests. Huh? Every time like, I put my money in my wallet, I clean it, and I'm like, I don't put money, and I don't spend it on, you know what I mean, on anything bad or you know what I mean? So that's how I probably got better at paying my bills. Yeah. And, and, and like, yeah, conviction comes upon you because like, even though that's there, you still have the free will and the choice yeah. to do the opposite of what it represents. Right? Good. <coughs> but that's crazy to think that he had a handkerchief. And they would pass around and would heal them, right? There's a guy, an old man that comes in here sometimes and teaches or preaches. And he brought some sacramental cleansing water drink. toxin drink yeah. stuff, right? You remember that? Yeah. When Will was here? Yeah. Will's cancer's in remission. Yeah. They give him six months to live. He had liver cancer. He drank it. I've got two bottles of it in my house. I gave you some of that. Will's can't, his cancer's been in remission for, for uh, eight months. For eight months. Yeah, but I poured most of it out because I don't know. It don't say how much water you're supposed to mix in. <laughs> I even told you, I said, it tastes funny, I'm sorry. Because I drank some once and it was like, it burnt my throat and everything. It was bad. But, like, I need to drink this more. My daggum hand cream. Hey, I said in here on Catholic Nation. In here, I was like, anybody? I was like, yeah. Yeah, but it's doing. I'm telling you, bro, it's doing something inside of you. The anointing that's on that, and the fact that you had the faith enough to trust in it, that the people that and it was made by an archbishop. I can't remember his name. It's on the bottle. I still got it. You know. Um, I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you. Anybody else want to do 19? Uh, 19, one through seven. 19, one through seven. But it's, it's like it's about like the journey of, of, of your faith and baptism and stuff. And I just got. I just, it's the same I thing just, Alice was talking yeah, about. Yeah, my question is just like, when does your faith journey begin? Like that, that's just I never I didn't really get much. Okay. Out. That's why I'm asking. Okay. Question, Good you know? question. Because that, that's that's what I'm, I'm kind Good of struggling question. with a little bit. You know? Mo, for me personally, and for most people, your faith journey begins before you're actually cognizant of it. Like, I've had people my whole life tell me that they could feel the spirit within me. I was a security guard for Christian concerts and the Gaithers, big time preachers and stuff, bro. I, I was their security guard when they would any time they come to Samir County. Like, so God's placing me in these positions, even though I'm going, talk to the hand, or whatever, <laughs> whatever it is they do, you know what I mean? So you weren't a Christian when you were a security guard for the no. big timers? No. Huh. When I heard skillet, I was like, I'll work. <laughs> I was like, I'll work doubles. <laughs> I was like, they're mosh pitting. The first thing they said was, man, don't let these Christian kids mosh pit. I was like, I'll work this. And then after all, they come walking out doing fireworks and all kinds of planes and stuff go off. And Jennifer Ledger, their drummer, they put her on a boom. That spin her in a circle and she played three drum sets at the same time spinning like this. Right. Bill and Noah. Noah wasn't a Christian because I was lusting. <laughs> See, he's bad, bro, you know? But he put me in the positions that it was hitting me, hitting me, hitting me. My spiritual journey started then. Started when my mom and dad used to tell me, you need Jesus in your life. You need Jesus in your life. Because I can close my eyes and think back all the way far, way far back to the first time somebody ever said you need to get God wrong. That's when it started. So that that so for like, me. Like so is that like for, so you're saying like when we were first introduced to God, like back when we were we were still you, in Sunday school. God says in the Bible, ignorance, he does not accept ignorance. So if you've heard his name, that's your you you've had an opportunity. So to look more into it. But did you start actively walking with Christ? No. I was 36 years old before I started actively walking with Christ. So, and he took lust. He took drugs. He took, I mean, literally, he took anything 
that ever waved me down, he's still working on the anger thing. Ang anger is one of them things that still is part of my, my sin nature that I can feel inside me still. But, like, none of the other things that I always thought was, like, bad, or sin, even, though I, even though I enjoyed them, I knew they weren't right. You know what I mean? They're gone. They're gone. I got one ring on my finger. One woman. I'm a one woman man. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah. I, I've never I've never experienced anything better or more erotic or more intense or more intimate. My relationship with God has made that possible. Because I've never been more intimate with him ever. I'm like an open book, transparent. He wants to see you like, like looking through a window. And he can. It's mainly us that he wants us to make ourselves a window. Because a lot of times we try to hide it, right? Y'all ever heard Chip talk about the guy that sells his house? Yeah. yeah. He says, you, I'm going to sell you my house for $300,000 and you cash out. There's $300,000 I'm buying your house. Thank you, bro. Oh, by the way, you can't have that room. One with the door that's locked with a padlock on it, that one's still mine, all right? Thanks for 300000 You can't do that with Jesus. That's a good analogy. Tim's got some good analogies. He does. That's a good one. Sell your house to somebody for $300,000 and tell them they got to give you, you can't have that money. Mm -mm. They ain't going. They ain't going. Yeah. Well, you got in there. <laughs> There's no telling what they had in there. You know what I'm saying? This John Wayne Gacy is full of daggum bodies. Who knows? <laughs> God wants it all. All. You know? And when you start giving it to him, things start to manifest. So when you're willing to give it to him. When you become willing, God, I'm yours. I'm a broken vessel, but fill me up so that I can pour, so that I can fill up other people. That's what he wants you to do. I'm shards of pottery. You put me back together, and I probably leave like a sieve. But I'll hold as much as you want to put in there, and I'll pass it out. Right? Not red solo cups, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here, okay, for 19, I got a whole bunch of stuff for 19. For 20, I didn't get much at all. And again, I'm into the history stuff about it, right? So, he's in a thesis, I believe it is. You got to remember at this time, there's large numbers of people that worship the god Diana, or another name for her is Artemis. Okay? Artemis. And it's a, a lot of them are starting to become Christians. So, Ephesus, and I said this last week too, because leading up into this, it's starting to happen. Ephesus is quickly becoming the center for Christianity because of its location, right? There are churches being found within a hundred mile radius of Ephesus. So you can leave Ephesus a hundred miles in any direction, and there's churches. That's how explosion, explosion, right? So Paul in Ephesus uses a lecture hall for his headquarters. A lecture hall, like at a college, right? Where they professors give their lectures or whatever, right? He would speak publicly and go from house to house. Dedicated, right? Dedicated for the Lord. He spent three years doing this day and night. He supported himself <coughs> by his own means. And his, his trade was tent making. That's what he knew how to do. Like Jesus' dad was a carpenter, taught Jesus' his trade of carpentry. Paul's, somebody in Paul's family or somewhere along the line, Paul got taught how to make tents. So they didn't pay him for preaching. He worked and preached. Amen. Come on. Right? He supported himself. Now every now and then they feed him, give him dinners, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But if you read in the Bible, as far as I know, anytime anybody ever gave him any kind of sums of money, he was taking it to other churches. He wasn't for him. Right? He supported himself. He was so effective through the power of the Holy Spirit that a great number of magicians take all their daggum books 
Two dollars. <laughs> I've always said it once today. They took all their books and made a bonfire out of them. They saw something in Paul that was so great, a light that was so bright, that they were like, all these magic tricks that we know, I was so pale sure. in comparison. They ain't nothing. That's what we want. That's the real deal right there. That's how powerful the Holy Spirit was working with him. A little bit, a little bit of cool facts about Ephesus. What? I've only said it once. There was a 35 foot wide road leading from the harbor all the way through the other end of Ephesus. And I didn't get the I didn't get how long it was. 35 feet. So that's a lane going this way, a lane going this way, and a turn lane. 35 foot wide road. Paved. Ready to go. From the shore through the city. Tell me they couldn't travel. Ephesus later became the home of the Apostle John. Right before he went to the island of Patmos. The temple of Artemis, who was the goddess I was just speaking about earlier, they also call her Diana, was defended by a riot because of Paul. Paul started taking all their money. Right? They are these guys are like making statues and whatever for this goddess, and the people are worshiping her. So they're coming in there and buying all their stuff. Well, Paul comes in and starts preaching Jesus. All the people start to leave and they want to know about Jesus. Now these guys ain't making no money. They cause a riot. Causes a riot. Paul almost dies in every city he ever goes to. Right? They had public latrines with running water in the year 47. <laughs> in the year 47. They had it set up so you could use the bathroom. And when you went to the bathroom, there was water underneath running. So it washed it out of the city. So nobody got sick in the year 47. That's crazy, ain't it? I broke this. Who was, I know a couple of y'all was talking about the miracles that Paul did, right? I, this is interesting to me. This is interesting. Miracles in Cyprus, Iconium, Lystra, Philippi, Ephesus, Malta, Corinth, and Thessalonica. Powerful miracles. What did, what, in my version it says, uh, yours was a little bit different. He gave him the power to perform unusual miracles. Or powerful miracles. That's the NLT version, right? But, he didn't do not the first miracle in Damascus, Jerusalem, Tarsus, which is his hometown, Syrian Antioch, which was the, the original big Antioch with the Gentile church, Pisidian Antioch, Derby, Athens, or Rome. He couldn't even heal his workmate or a guy that traveled with him. Trephimus or Trophimus was the guy's name. Couldn't heal him. Couldn't heal himself of the thorn in his flesh. So that goes back, Alex, what we were talking about, about it's, all, it's a two-way street. Yes, Jesus had the power to heal somebody even though, like the dude at the pool, the dude at the pool is like, who are you? He's like, I'm Jesus. I can heal you. And he's like, you're going to throw me in the pool? <laughs> he's like, what? <laughs> Just get up, dude. <laughs> like, come on. He's like, but nobody's going to help me in the pool. <laughs> you know? <laughs> he's like, come on. Healed him. Didn't even, and he, he runs away. He's like, I've not walked in 40 years. And they're like, who healed you? He's like, I have no idea. <laughs> he told him his name twice. So it was, Jesus had the power to heal people based on Jesus' faith. When it comes to us, it's a two-way street for the most part. If you don't have any, even the smallest mustard seed of faith in you, it's really hard for me to help you or another believer. It's just hard. It just is. Can you imagine how many people you walk by that day that were way to be healed and just yeah. that one man right to him. left him but I, I, and nobody, I, he did it and think about it Jesus never did nothing just by the wayside yeah. it was on purpose yes. healed a dude that could have cared less who he was <laughs> for real to prove a point huh? to me to me that proves a point man. I'm Jesus I'm God himself every other time you hear him say if you're faith or because of your faith or do you have the faith? This time he was like, 
Jeez. <laughs> He's like, what's your name again? <laughs> that sounds like me, dude. I can't, I suck with names, you know what I mean? I do. Like the milk guy, he's been coming to our, twi- he comes twice a week. They changed about four months ago. So for four months, it's the same guy every Monday and Wednesday. I have no idea what his name is. <laughs> He'll come in there, hey, Jimmy. I'm like, hey. <laughs> Bud. <laughs> I'm like, what's his name? Why don't they wear name tags? <laughs> You know, I'm just vibe with them. But in this instance, the dude heals him. He's been paralyzed from birth. And, like, if you heal me and I can't walk or move or talk, or, like, something's wrong with me and you touch me, I'm like, who are you? Dude's like, I don't know the street. You know? It's at this time, right here at the end of Acts chapter 19, that Paul, if he hadn't already started, is starting to make plans to go to Rome. Right? And eventually he gets to go because he makes an appeal to Caesar. So he gets to go anyway. Who wants to do 20? Dang. Go ahead. So, and that was like four hands. I love it. That, and, it's awesome, bro. Both, both chapters speak to me about an unremitted suffering and telling you that comes to pass. It's all worth it for the work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. I also have life with Jesus unless we use it for the work of our Lord Jesus Christ and the message of grace that is the able to build us up and give us inheritance in the kingdom of God. Your life previous to walking with Jesus was pointless. How many, you can't tell me you haven't pondered the meaning of life. Why do we exist? Why are we here? What's my purpose? You can't tell me you've never thought of these things. At least slightly. Or passing a fleeting fleeting thoughts went through your head like, where did we come from? And why are we really here? That precious manual. God breathed word. Reveals it all to you. And it's really when you start believing in it and walking it that all of a sudden you start getting these revelations of this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. Now, that's why. You know, and it never stops. It keeps on. More and more and more. It's amazing. You had your hand raised? You do it 20? Wait a minute now. Hold on before you get started. When I was here Monday, was you not wearing that same shirt? Is that the only word? Is that the only word? He's like, it's okay, bud. We got a fantastic one. I'm just kidding. Bro. We also got a. I'm just kidding. 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 i am just kidding i am <laughs> He's the guy that don't take a shower, he just puts more deodorant on, it never works. I'm just kidding, bro. Come on. Alright. Luke Luke states, even though the change and tribulations are late, and we didn't let this thing get his mind or keep him progressing forward. Whenever we are coming up on hard times, I, I know that most of my life I've went the other direction because I knew it wouldn't turn out being the way I was unsure of what I was doing. Luke also said, I don't count my life here to myself because he knows and trusts God's plan. And what stands out to me, to me is the last part when he said, the ministry we have received in Christ, and no matter what we do, what we've been through will replace all the glory that the body created who has a plan and a race for each one of us to run. All the glory goes to God. And it is the ministry you receive from Christ. Because regardless whether you, and I've said this a million times, regardless whether you're standing in front of a podium, a pulpit, and a church, I don't care where you're at. You can be at the construction site, you can be managing a restaurant, you can be working a go kart track. God has a plan for you to minister to someone at some point. Period. Believe it. 
believe it. That's why we're here. We're here. That one, the number one reason that you're breathing is the Great Commission to make disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teach them all I've commanded. Right? Oh, what you want to do for you? Yeah. You raise your hand. Somebody else raised their hand. Joe. Did you raise your hand? Yeah, did. You did? Did you raise your hand? Okay, so him, him, him. Okay, go ahead. Wait. Go. Wait. Okay, in 19, I got saved out in verse 6 about the Holy Spirit. And also in 20, I got something about the Holy Spirit. But here, again in this chapter, Paul continues to say, but in this chapter, he says goodbye to the teaching elders. Yes. And the verse, the verse that stuck out to me is verse 20 through 22. And it says, How I did not uh, shrink from telling you anything that was for your benefit to teach you in public meetings and from house to house. So constantly and earnestly, I bore testimony both to the Jews and Greeks, urging them to turn in dependence to God and to have our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now you see I'm going to Jerusalem bound by the Holy Spirit and obligated and compelled by the Spirit not knowing what will befall me there. And uh, uh, but it says in 22 that the Holy Spirit compels me. I look in the hell of it says uh, compel means to drive or urge or force or irresistibility. And then I guess the, uh, I just wonder what it feels like to have the Holy Spirit in that song. The Holy Spirit is pissed. He's pesky. He don't quit. Uh, quit, man. Quit. Quit. He's like, church, church, church. Fine. Like, seriously, it'll happen. It'll happen. Like, it starts out subtly at church, especially when I came here. Because we would go to church when I was locked up, like the little church room. I don't know. Most jails had one. You know what I mean? But it wasn't the same. We were doing it just to get out of the pod or something like that. Okay, so I started going to church when I get the program. And I'm sitting there, and they're like, come to the altar, I'm going to pray for you. And in, in my head, I'm like, no, 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 no. You need this, no. And I just sat there for a month. You know, four weeks, five weeks, I'm not doing it. That's, that's not you. It's the Holy Spirit. Anytime you're being prompted to proceed into something spiritual, it's not yourself or the devil. Yourself is flesh. And the devil is lies. The Holy Spirit within you will prompt you to do things that promote your spirituality in Christ, right? It starts out subtly like that. And you have to start answering the call before he gives you a bigger call. Remember, don't forget, guys, Paul was a Christian for 14 years. 14 years before he ever went anywhere and spoke about Jesus successfully. The first half of his life, he persecuted Christians. So for 30 years, he was killing Christians. And God said, watch this. The next 30 years, he was saving. Right? So don't get discouraged if February, February 20th, I think, or 26th, it's an even number, I remember that, will be four years that I've been a professed Christian. Four years. I try to get it into my head not to get discouraged because I don't have my own church yet. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? I'm saying, like, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, the more you walk with Christ, the more you're going to be able to why? For real. It just, it's natural. Like, why, why don't I, why don't I pray more for people publicly? That's one thing that I ask myself all the time. Because I, in, in a church setting, we were at New Hope, it comes naturally to me. In a public setting, they'll say something, hey, keep me in your prayers, and the Holy Spirit's going, right now, pray, grab them, pray. And I'm like, I will, I will. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that still happens. That you can't get discouraged. You just got to know what it is, the Holy Spirit, and you got to know that it's real and that He's prompting you into something that's promoting you, and you just got to start answering and then all of a sudden, he'll start. 
knocking at your back and door. And if it's one of them screen doors, he can't even get Oh, man. <laughs> and he'll drive you crazy, you know, until you start telling yes. Because he's like, like the word, the, in Genesis, <laughs> the word for spirit is quake. Like, so the Holy Spirit's always like this. Like me on C4s after doing 10 sets of bench press. Come on. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's always like that. And you're like, He's like the little pesky brother. Spoons. <laughs> you know, my dad's like, you can make more noise with two wet sponges than anybody else can with a set of drums. <laughs> you're you're going to answer, right? You're going to answer. You'll get it. I'm telling you, it'll start. With one of you two. Uh, I just want to say that you know, not everything is good. No I don't believe there is. Everything is perfect. Yeah, I, I got on Acts 20, 22. And uh, says, in the King James, it says, And how I picked back nothing that was God's will be. But it shows you adopt you publicly and from house to house. This, is what, this verse speaks volumes to me. If they, if they tell us we have 2020 vision, that means we see clearly. Paul wow. says he holds back nothing that was profitable to his fellow believers. If, God reveals something to you, it's meant to share. Yep. As we share the things He reveals to us, our understanding will increase. Yes. If we hold back those things, we cease to grow in the knowledge of God, God's Word, and the understanding of our purpose within His kingdom. Yep. And this, like exactly the same verses you were talking about, it also it, it also points to your ability to, to discern. Because if you're getting something and it's not profitable to anybody, you don't even know why you're getting it or what to do with it, it's most likely not from God. Right? There, there's a like there's definitely a difference when God is like pushing you or the Holy Spirit is pushing you to further his kingdom, or if something else is pushing you in the opposite direction to further your destruction. You have to learn to discern that. And Paul even says, he says, I've taught the same thing to the Jews and the Greeks or the Gentiles. He didn't change. This is the same guy that in Corinthians at the end of chapter 10, I think it is going into 11, that says, whoever you are and however you act, I'm going to act like you a little bit so we can buddy-buddy, right? He says, if you guys are chess players, I'm going to play chess with you. That way I can connect with you on some level. And then all of a sudden I'm going to start talking about Jesus. And it's going to be the same thing that I tell the bodybuilders that I hang out with over here. It's going to be the same thing that I tell all the homeless people that I hang out with over here. And with Paul, it's the same thing I'm going to tell all these inner city kids that are playing basketball. <laughs> gotcha. How about that? Man, how are you talking with Jesus? <laughs> same message. He don't change the message. Right? He don't. And he does say that, don't he? He says, I will act. I know how to be amazing. I, I, can whatever. Whatever. I can do whatever. I can be a poor man, a rich man. Uh, I can be a Greek. I can be a Gentile. I can be a Jew. I can be whatever you are so that I can get to know you and start talking about Jesus. He says, what it goes, he says I know how to be content in any situation. That's in Philippians. I, hold on, I'll read. One says a base and a bound. I know how to suffer. But I think in Philippians, he says the same kept in. What he's talking about was people talking about, I don't eat that kind of stuff. Hold on. Yeah, that's what he's talking about. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, it's in it's in First Corinthians chapter ten. And he says, I don't care how you act or who you are, I'm going to act like you so that I can get to know you and so that you will warm up to me. Pretty much what he's saying. Let's see. Okay, so this is NLT. So whether you eat or drink or whatever it is you do, do it all in the glory of God. Don't give offense to Jews or Gentiles or the church of God. I too try to please everyone in everything that I do. 
I don't just do what's best for me, I do what's best for the others around me so that they may be safe. And it goes on into First Corinthians chapter 11. And you should imitate me just as I imitate Christ. So what he's this, what more or less, in a different version, it says it different. He says, I'm going to act like you so that you see the light in me and you're going to imitate me the way I imitate Christ. I'll be poor just like you. I'll be homeless just like you. I'll be rich just like you. Whatever it is, however it is y'all act, whatever kind of clique y'all got, I'm going to do it so I can get in there and talk to you guys. That's powerful, man. Yes. That's powerful. But he says right here in Acts, what we're reading, I preach the same message. Never changed his message. Right? You're looking like Stephen's y'all one more every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know if I know that 